I'm Shannon Watkins, Senior Writer at the James G. Martin Center for Academic Renewal. Today, I am with the North Carolina Community College System President, uh, Thomas Stith. Uh, president Stith was elected uh, the new Community College System President in December, uh, and he, he is here to speak with me uh, about his vision and goals for the Community College System. President Stith, thank you very much for joining me. Shannon, it's good to be with you today. Look forward to our discussion. All right, so to get started, uh, what are your top priorities for your first year as the system president? Well, I think a couple of things come to mind. First and foremost, to make sure I'm clearly articulating my vision for the North Carolina Community College system. And it's really centered around three key points. Uh, first, uh, to ensure that the North Carolina Community College system is viewed as the first choice for affordable and accessible education. Uh, if you look at the depth and breadth of the educational opportunities within the community college system, uh, while we have you know, obviously strong uh, e uh, educational ecosystem in the state, I really believe uh, whether it's a newly minted high school student or a displaced worker that is looking for retraining or someone that's trying to excel in their career, that it, the North Carolina Community College System uh, provides that first choice option. Uh, and it is accessible and affordable. Uh, secondly, uh, to continue uh, as we've done throughout our, our history to serve as that entity to lead in economic uh, development and economic expansion uh, as we uh, continue to open our economy uh, post uh, pandemic and as we work through the current uh, state of pan uh, the pandemic, uh, I, I really believe that the community college system will be on the the leading edge of not only our recovery, but that economic growth. Uh, and and, and, and a, a, the third point would be uh, to lead uh, and set the standard, not only uh, within the state, but nationally for diversity and inclusion. Uh, if you look at North Carolina and as a North Carolina native, you know, I appreciate the diversity of our state uh, from Manio to Murphy, uh, and that is our strength. Uh, and so we want to make sure that we're utilizing uh, that, uh, that diversity across our state, the citizens of our state, and have that as a foundational principle uh, as we move forward as a system. Uh, next, it would, would certainly be, you know, how do you accomplish all that? Uh, and, and that's ensuring that we have the proper resources moving forward. Uh, so we are very engaged with our current legislative uh, session. Uh, we have some very key uh, uh, legislative requests that we think are gonna be very critical uh, to the operation of the community college system uh, in no particular order, but we think at first it's very important to ensure uh, that we have the, the proper funding uh, for our campus uh, faculty and staff uh, to, to be competitive and to not only recruit, uh, but retain uh, the excellent talent on our campuses. We think uh, now is the time to at least have a 5% increase in, in staff salaries. Right now we're 41st in the country and, and I'll repeat that, 41st in the country. Uh, we have the third largest community college system in the country. Uh, I submit to you, we are the number one community college system in the country. Uh, and we need to ensure that we are uh, retaining and attracting uh, property faculty and staff. Uh, because of the impact of the pandemic, it's gonna be important also to have a budget stabilization fund. Uh, we are ensuring that our uh, colleges are utilizing uh, federal recovery dollars uh, but we want to ensure also if there are gaps in that funding uh, that we have state dollars that will we'll, uh, go in after uh, federal funds have been expended to ensure that we are properly positioned uh, to serve our role uh, as we uh, recover and grow our economy. Uh, uh, we have a key initiative around uh, IT uh, modernization to ensure that our 58 colleges have a, a shared system for their IT needs. Uh, for whether it's HR or student records to ensure we're operating as an efficient system uh, and, and so funding to complete that. And also, unfortunately, uh, our, our community colleges have been subject to cyber uh, security attack and ransomware. And so we have uh, an additional request that would begin to uh, continue our uh, focus on ensuring that we have a safe and secure IT system. Uh, we have one of our community colleges that has reached um, the uh, statutory uh, uh, 
number of enrollment for a, it's called a multi-campus site. So we, we uh, want to ensure that's funded. And we know there are discussions in the legislature this year around capital. Uh, we have identified over $2 billion of capital needs within the 58 uh, college community college system. Uh, half a billion of that is repair and renovation. So we're gonna be very uh, engaged if those conversations develop. And then finally, um, you know, ensuring that we have a strong team here at the system office as we move forward. Uh, we, uh, when I uh, joined the system office staff, uh, on, on January 11th, you know, we had, you know, certainly great individuals in place. We've had opportunities to strengthen that team over the last few weeks. And I continue, will continue to build the team that will, that will lead the system forward. So uh, those are some of the key areas that I'm uh, focusing on uh, as I um, uh, begin to lead, uh, as I said, the, the best community college system in the country. Wonderful. Thank you. Sure. Uh, We've seen that measuring student success in terms of graduation rates doesn't provide the full picture of what community colleges has to offer. Uh, what's a better way to measure the success of North Carolina's community colleges? Sure. And certainly graduation rates are part of that equation, um, but I think it's very key to look at uh, what we also include as success, and, and I think our students do as well, you know, how are they placed uh, with a job or an opportunity once they've uh, pursue, pursued either their two-year degree, uh, and they may uh, utilize that, or they may go on to a, a, a four-year college experience. That would be a measurement as well. Uh, again, as I said, are they able to receive, whether it's a two-year degree or short-term workforce training? Uh, they may be a displaced worker. Uh, that doesn't have, you know, candidly, the time for a two-year experience, uh, they need an opportunity now. Uh, so uh, what is the success of our short-term training? And we've seen uh, that uh, certainly be very successful for individuals that, that need that retraining, that may have been displaced uh, because of the pandemic or other economic uh, impacts and, and, and have been able to take advantage of that. So I think while graduation rate is a part of it, uh, certainly, those other areas uh, are, are very critical uh, to the students that we serve. <clears throat> are there any specific colleges where enrollments are down? Uh, and is there any plans to consolidate under-enrolled colleges in rural towns? Uh, it, you know, it, we've seen nationally an uh, impact on enrollment to, uh, with community college systems in general, uh, a little over 10% nationally. Uh, we've seen the same effect here in North Carolina. Uh, fortunately, uh, not as uh, significant as the national level, and, and we measure uh, by budget FTEs. That's uh, you know there are gross numbers, but budget FTEs are about down about seven percent. And we have seen uh, specifically in some of the demographic areas of our students, African American males, Hispanic males are, are significantly down from an enrollment perspective. Uh, but we've seen uh, when you get uh, look at the specific college within our 58 uh, college system. Uh, it, it, you know, there, there, there are impacts in enrollment really across our system. This, this pandemic has been different. Uh, well, I say this pandemic, this economic crisis has been different. It is a global pandemic because typically when you have an economic shock to your system, you will see the enrollment increase uh, in our community college system because of the displacement of workers. This is very different. Uh, we, no one has experienced, uh, at least in our lifetime, a global pandemic of this nature. And so we are seeing different uh, enrollment trends and, and we have been impacted, but we are looking at ways as we come forward uh, out of and reopen our economy. We've been very strategic uh, while we've had continued and remained open. Uh, our campuses uh, have done so throughout the pandemic uh, with online in-person classes, uh, you know, instituting proper um, uh, uh, safety protocols, but we've also been able to offer virtual learning environments for those students uh, that could pursue a virtual experience. So uh, we've been flexible through the pandemic and, and remained open. Uh, we certainly are not considering uh, consolidation on your last point. Uh, we, we, the integrity of the 58 colleges throughout the state is very important, uh, not only from an educational point of view in those communities, uh, but an economic engine as well. Uh, what we're looking at are, are efficiencies, as we mentioned, uh, as we, as I mentioned earlier, around our IT system. That will be a shared system throughout our 58 college system, 
that will provide not only efficiencies, but cost savings. So we think uh, our, our, the integrity of the 58 college uh, uh, member system uh, needs to remain intact, uh, but we also are looking at efficiencies to ensure that we're operating in a fiscally responsible manner. Great, thank you. Sure. Uh, community colleges play an important role in workforce development. Are there any plans to expand apprenticeship opportunities and improve career and technical education? Uh, certainly, uh, and we've seen just tremendous uh, success with our apprenticeship program, if I could uh, toot our own horn. Uh, over the last couple of years, two to three years, we've seen an 80% increase in the utilization of the apprenticeship program, uh, and certainly we will continue to do that. That, that is not achieved um, by chance. That's achieved by strong relationships with industry, identifying those areas that are uh, more applicable for apprenticeship opportunities. And so we continue, we, we uh, anticipate the continued expansion uh, of the apprenticeship program uh, and also our career in, in, in technical, as you mentioned, and also not only focusing on uh, high school graduates, but individuals uh, and students that are currently in high school. Uh, so focusing on our youth, uh, getting, uh, making sure they have access early uh, within their high school careers. And we think that's going to provide uh, a very strong pathway uh, to career success. Wonderful. Uh, and tell us a little bit about industry credentials. Uh, and what's the community college's relationship like with the industries that are part of this credentialing system? Right, that's very important. And, and um, it, I'm sure you're aware of uh, the, the work that My Future NC has done and, and the need uh, by 2020 to increase either credentialing or degrees by 2 million individuals. Uh, so we're very involved with that effort. Uh, again, within our, our curriculum, we're embedding uh, the requirements uh, that we have uh, discussed with industry around credentialing or uh, certifications. Uh, so uh, the community college system uh, firmly uh, believes if we're gonna reach our goal uh, by 20, uh, 2030, uh, it will be the community college system producing uh, the majority of those individuals with that, that credentialing that will be necessary uh, to have the proper uh, workforce. So we, uh, we're very focused on that and working with, with all partners to ensure that, that we achieve that goal as a state. Great. Uh, some students start technical training or their academic studies while in high school, uh, focusing on the youth like you mentioned. Uh, through the career and technical education or career and college promise pathways. Uh, what do you think is the future of dual enrollment? Uh, uh, we believe uh, at the community college system that that's going to only increase. Uh, it really provides a, uh, as I mentioned earlier, our focus on uh, being the first choice for accessible, affordable education. Uh, but this is, uh, you know, provides even brighter light on that concept because as a a high school student, you're able to pursue college level courses at no cost. Um, and those courses will count as you continue with your educational career. Uh, so uh, certainly given the, the increasing cost of higher education, uh, this provides a pathway for, as I mentioned in, in high school, uh, for no cost uh, opportunity to achieve, uh, receive those uh, uh, classes and to achieve uh, educational success at a much uh, uh, reduced cost. So uh, I believe that we'll continue to see growth uh, in that, um, in that uh, you know, dual uh, enrollment space. And how does the system plan on keeping up with changes in the labor market? Well, and, and it is constantly changing. Uh, we, we are, we're literally in discussions now because we know we've identified eight to 10 uh, high growth, high uh, income industries, everything from healthcare to HVAC to construction uh, to IT. Uh, we have uh, uh, a, a just a plethora of, of opportunities within the system, but we know um, uh, in, in, again, in, with this, the impact of the global pandemic, we're gonna to have to be very flexible and it's gonna be extremely important to be, to enhance our engagement with uh, business and industry uh, to ensure that we are, are, are up to date uh, and current and flexible with the offerings that we have within the community college system. Um, again, as, as, uh, as the frontline educational source in North Carolina, 
that engagement with industry is going to be critical now as we move forward as our economy opens and grows. Great, thank you. Uh, are there plans for more four-year programs within the community college system? You know, the, we, we are very uh, um, efficient and uh, focused on our two-year associate's degrees. We have workforce training, as I mentioned, short-term workforce training. And we, our, our, our strategy is, is, as I kind of say to the team, play to our strengths. Uh, and those are our strengths, you know, offering that two-year associate, offering a pathway to those individuals uh, that may want to continue to a four-year, four uh, being uh, very responsive to industry, uh, in particular with our short-term workforce training so that we can turn around a uh, significant workforce uh, supply for industry. And I really, I, I, I see as, as, you know, as our, our role is to continue to do that and do that in an efficient and effective manner. Great. Uh, the UNC system recently adopted a policy to implement a common course numbering system so that students don't lose credits when transferring between institutions. Uh, students who transfer from community colleges to a UNC school typically don't experience this problem because of the comprehensive articulation agreement that exists between the community college system and the UNC system. Uh, but there are still community college students particularly those without an associate's degree or with a workforce associate uh, who lose credits after they transfer. Are there any plans to address this issue? We will continue to work uh, and we have a, a joint uh, committee uh, between the university system and the community college system to, to ensure that as we uh, you know, continue to sign articulation agreements, because while we have a system to system articulation arrangement, we also have colleges that sign uh, local uh, articulation agreements with universities to try to address some of the gaps. But from a system to system perspective, we're going to continue uh, to enhance our efforts to ensure that no credits are, uh, are, are wasted or are lost uh, and that they have the benefit of having that pathway from the community college system uh, if they choose to go on to the university system. That sounds wonderful. Uh, the academic quality of community colleges in North Carolina is very, and you hear it from people at UNC who see transfers coming in and say, some of these students are great, they graduate at higher rates than our own students, but some of them have a long way to go to, to really be ready. Uh, what are the plans to improve academic quality so that it can be the best of what the community college system offers? Uh. Uh, one, I think that's a very interesting comment from my colleagues at UNC System. So we, we, we won't debate that. Uh, uh, but what I will say is uh, our, our graduates are outstanding. Uh, uh, Dallas Herring, uh, one of the, you know, the founder uh, or father, rather, of the community college system, it speaks to uh, that we have an open door policy, uh, that we take individuals where they are and work with them uh, to achieve uh, their, their, their highest uh, level of achievement, and we're doing that. Um, uh, we, we, we and, and I'll poke back at our university friends, and, and as I go to classrooms uh, across the state, you know, I see four-year degree and our university graduates attending community college in many cases as they, one, either enhance their career uh, or having to retool their career. Uh, so we are, are always looking at continuous improvement within the, the community college system. Uh, but as I, as I go to classes that are, are working with our veterans uh, and, and tr as they transition and, and go into fields such as IT, as I look at uh, our newly minted high school graduates and they enter either EMS courses or uh, nursing courses, uh, again, I'll say that the North Carolina Community College System, uh, bar none, is the leading system in the, not only, uh, uh, obviously, I feel in North Carolina, uh, but in the country. And so we will continue to uh, have that continuous improvement uh, and, and commitment to excellence. That sounds great. Uh, so uh, the pandemic has disrupted, as you mentioned, nearly every aspect of higher education, including community colleges. Uh, what are the biggest challenges posed by COVID going forward? Uh, well, as I mentioned, the, the community college system never closed uh, during the pandemic. We had to be very flexible, uh, in particular in our rural areas. We were able to utilize uh, funding or recovery funding to expand broadband so that we uh, had access issues 
uh, in particular in our rural community colleges. So we've been flexible uh, and remained open throughout the pandemic. As we look forward, uh, it will be uh, the re uh, additional return uh, to uh, campus instruction and in enhancing that, as I said, uh, just uh, attended a community college this week uh, with a class uh, full of students, uh, properly social distance and, and proper uh, safety precautions. Uh, but we know that will be expanding as, as we uh, move forward uh, through recovery. Uh, so focusing on in enhancing enrollment, uh, as I mentioned, this, is, this economic shock has been uh, different than historic ones. So we know that uh, enrollment uh, and we anticipate uh, and are doing outreach efforts to enhance that. Uh, we also know that there's been displacement, uh, job displacement during this pandemic and in our, in our worker, short-term worker retraining or, or full associates will be in very high demand. Uh, so as we look at the challenge of uh, coming out of uh, COVID and the impact, uh, we know that we will, we will face uh, the, the increased challenge of enhancing that enrollment and being prepared uh, for that, uh, that, that influx of students as they look to uh, enhance their academic uh, proudness and be prepared for opportunities that exist in the, the economy. Great, thank you. Uh, President Stitt, those are all of my questions. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else you would like to, to add that I didn't cover, uh, but uh, so you can take this opportunity if you like, or we can conclude. No, I would, well, first of all, I'd like to, to, to thank uh, the Martin Center for the opportunity to speak um, and, and just reemphasize uh, the role that the, the North Carolina Community College system plays in our educational future and, and our economic future uh, is critical. Uh, we've served the role in the past to, to be that, uh, that choice that is able to prepare our workforce, prepare individuals for opportunity, and we will continue to do so. And I'm very excited about uh, the future of, for the system and for North Carolina as we work together uh, to move our state forward. Thank you.